Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm delighted to be here. I was a little bit late coming in because I was doing a Women into Cycling uh, course. I've recently been cycling into City Hall uh, every day this month um, as part of my Lord Mayor's um, environmental challenge and um, have mixed emotions about cycling, but glad to be, be here to hear some of the, um, some of the panel uh, discussion. We know that the climate emergency is real. And we know that more and more businesses are considering the impact of climate change and assessing the risks to their business models. But the climate emergency is also an opportunity for businesses here in Northern Ireland to play a critical role in removing carbon from our economy. And it's heartening to see that many of our businesses are seizing the opportunity to invent new technologies which are creating investment, jobs and growth. As Lord Mayor and an environmentalist, I'm delighted that Belfast City Council is putting climate action into the heart of what we do. We made a commitment to become a carbon neutral organization and since declaring a climate emergency in 2019, this is what happens when you get multiple political parties elected, um, it's become a key focus, uh, especially as we move towards COP26 in November. Local authorities have a major role in driving action within communities, and as council, it is so important that we lead the way. As a coastal city, as was mentioned, Belfast faces unprecedented challenges to build resilience and overcome the risks posed by climate change. We need to protect the city from an increased risk of flooding and other extreme weather events, using our green and blue spaces to mitigate flooding and increase biodiversity. But we also need to decarbonize our, uh, our economy. We're partnering with Queen's U University through the Climate Commission, delivering key reports such as the Belfast Carbon Roadmap, which sets out a pathway to net zero by 2050. And we will be putting in, we'll be taking as much carbon out of uh, the atmosphere as we're putting into it. The roadmap also tells us that the best opportunities for decarbonizing our economy lie in efforts to reduce emissions from buildings transport and industry. But how do we do this? The bold vision is the city's hope to transform the center of Belfast, building on the city's existing assets. It recognizes that now is the time for bold decisions to deliver change to create a better connected and inclusive city center, one that is fit to meet the challenges of the climate crisis. We know that we need to reimagine the center of Belfast. What if the city centre became the first place in Northern Ireland that was carbon neutral? The dominance of the car in the centre of Belfast has to end. Our streets are clogged with traffic, roads and junctions have created physical barriers between communities and the city centre, and the poor air quality in parts of our city isn't sustainable or acceptable. Our vision is for a green, walkable and cyclable network of streets and places with a world-class public transport system and the end of the dominance of the car. For a rebalanced green street network which connects shared spaces, we want additional bridges over the river and easy interconnection between transport modes through interchange hubs across the city. A city centre reconnected with the Lagan will improve the quality of life as well as the main route for active travel. The availability of vacant, derelict and underused land uh, such as surface car parking provides an opportunity to rethink and diversify our land use to create a vibrant and diverse city. And I love the Belfast Harbour announcement yesterday for the urban garden and city keys. More of this thinking is so important. We want the innovation, the innovation and the energy of the private sector to help us deliver the bolder vision to drive emissions down and to help find new solutions to complex problems. We want businesses to lead the way in helping Belfast transition to a net zero economy that is resilient to the impacts of climate change. We also want businesses in Belfast to up their game, delivering products and services while producing less carbon emissions, which means measuring and disclosing your emissions, switching to clean power, trying to upgrade your fleets to low emission vehicles, making your buildings more efficient, and working with your supply chains. Because businesses know that what's good for the environment is often what's good for the bottom line. Before I hand over, I just want to say that I'm actually incredibly heartened. 
You know, part of my role is going into different communities and meeting with diverse groups of people. And when I first started working in politics, I was a researcher in the, in the Northern Ireland Assembly, and there was no talk of climate change legislation. We, we, weren't having, we weren't having the practical conversations. We didn't have a climate commissioner as we do in Belfast City Council. We didn't have our mini Stern report. We hadn't declared a climate emergency. When you're looking at these issues, it's very easy to become despondent, um, and we have to take them seriously. But we need to stay motivated and we need to stay inspired because we need people to act. And together, I feel like we're going in the right direction. We just need to sustain that. So thank you so much. Thank you for these conversations, and let's keep going with it. Thank you.